Hey, I got a question I'd like to ask you guys and have you weigh in on it. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So welcome to Urban Monk TV, uh, where I'm building the Cafe Eraser. Welcome back if you're following this series. And uh, if you watched my last episode, you saw that I asked whether or not I should use a brown, a dark leather brown it's called, color to uh, do accessories, hardware, and the frame, possibly, on this bike. Um, so let's compare what we have so far. So what is for sure going to stay is this canvas white with the green stripes. There's no question in my mind about this. This stays. The question is, uh, for all the accessories in the frame, uh, do I go with a brown like this, real dark, um, or perhaps darker, uh, or, you know, the old black? Um, let's set this up. I want to get a little bit more visual reference for you guys. So, I don't know how well this is all showing up. I'm trying to get a critical amount. You know, if I had grips, something like this color or even a real leather and, you know, brown master cylinder, leave the clip on black, they'd probably be down here. Take a look at that. Hopefully that's enough of a visual reference to make your mind up about that. And now, and now what if everything were just black? You know, I'm trying to hold some black stuff up here. What else do I have that's black? I only have two hands. Is that enough black to reference that? You know, black of course works, right? I mean, that's, that's going to work. Maybe I should talk about some other things here. We're going to have, you know, chrome uh, gauges, speedometer and tack. Um, of course, the triple tree could be black or brown. The frame could be black. Triple tree could be a combination. Could be black frame, brown accessories. Um, the header, yeah, the headers and exhaust will be black. And the engine is black. Maybe let's take a look at that for a second. So the engine has been waiting so patiently over here for me as I work on the frame and the rest of the bike. I mean what do we have here? We've got shiny parts, call them chrome, but they're actually polished aluminum of course. Got the black cylinders, you're gonna have black exhaust headers coming out of there and then of course the uh, natural aluminum color of well, probably 60% of the engine. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Um, I have not put clear coat on any of those brown parts that I showed you um, because I could change course here and make them black. So uh, I'm going to hold off on any clear coating and any further movement in painting these parts until uh, you guys weigh in and uh, ultimately I'm going to make the decision but uh, I'm going to read every one of your comments and it'll, it'll have sway on me. Um, that's it. Now uh, I want to clean up the wheels for a change of pace. So it's early morning again and uh, my family is sleeping so I can't turn on the power tools yet and I'm always looking for something that's uh, constructive and uh, make progress. Uh, you know, a lot of things need to be done. One of the things that needs to be done is cleaning. Just cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. All of this stuff, it's a 40-something year old motorcycle, 41, and uh, there's plenty of <laughs> opportunity to get out some cleaning materials. So that's what I'm going to do today. We're going to talk about uh, how I'm going to go about cleaning up these old spoked chrome wheels. So one of the cool things about the 77 to 79 Suzuki GS 
is that the wheel diameter is very close on these things. 18 rear, 19 front. So um, a lot of cafe racers, if you want to get a really cool look to them, get the front wheel and the back wheel the same diameter. If you want to do that with a cafe racer, uh, first it helps to start out with a spoked hub to begin with and then you can take this all apart, buy a 19 or get two 18s, um, get two rims or wheels that are the same size and re-spoke them. Um, like I've mentioned before, this particular project, this GS550, this is a budget project. I'm trying to do this at the lowest cost I can, so that was one of the reasons why I chose a 77, uh, this is a 78, but 77 to 79 GSE uh, had spoked wheels. And so you got that look right out of the gate. So for me, I don't even have to take these apart and uh, saves me a lot of work, but I got to clean them because they're 41 years old. So um, there's your options, guys. If you buy spoked to begin with, then you can have that spoked look uh, and then if the bikes, you know, in this age range, they tend to put the diameter pretty close together. Um, these wheels are heavy, they're steel, uh, chrome steel, so that's a bit of a disadvantage. And if I was really building this thing to be a performance race bike, I'd probably put some lighter alloy rims on this and just go with these spokes and you can, uh, is it Buchanan's that has all the uh, spokes? I forget the name of the place. Anyways, you can order up spokes and relace these things uh, easy enough. That, of course, would make it much easier to clean the hubs, too. Um, I'm going to try to polish these all assembled, and, and that's going to take a lot of hand work and a lot of Dremel work, but we'll do the best we can. Um, you know, if I don't have great success, then maybe I'll have to pull it apart. But enough about the wheels and the size. If you choose a bike that has mag wheels to begin with, you're challenged to come up with a spoke look because you've got to find a hub that's going to fit the axle and the brakes and all of that. That gets to be real complicated custom work. Uh, can be done and can be done in your garage with maybe a minimal amount of help from an outside machine shop. So I don't want to discourage anybody from doing that, but uh, a bit more engineering involved there. So starting out with uh, the bike I did, we'll get the look we're looking for uh, at a low cost and we just gotta clean them up. Those are funny three things to point out. <laughs> so we really have three components here that we need to clean. We have the hub, one, here I go with three points again, one, hub, two, the spokes, and three, the rims themselves. I'm just going to start with the rims because that's kind of the low-hanging fruit here. Uh, it's easy. And I'm going to use um, just some steel wool to initially break through. Well, first thing I'm going to do is just wash them with a, a mild soap and water and just get the dust and the grime off. Uh, that's going to go a long way right there. One thing I'm doing is, you know, as I work between each spoke, I got to make sure I get every one and your mind will lose track. So I just start at the valve stem and just go around and then I don't have to really pay attention. I'm just going one to the next. Before and after. just the wheels. So next is the spokes and as you can see some of these have some corrosion. You know, these aren't quite treated, they're not chromed, they're like uh, you know zinc um, galvanized which has its limits. So steel wool for these puppies and this is gonna take a while and then for this grime on the uh, speedo gear, 
I'm gonna go to my old friend's kerosene. It just cuts through that so quickly. And uh, if you're in another state other than California or somewhere else in the world, uh, mineral spirits would be actually my first choice because it'll cut just like kerosene, but it's not as flammable and a little less noxious, though kerosene's not bad. What I would not use is any of those water-based degreasers. Every time I try one of those, it's just a fail. this up with the Dremel. So, back to spokes. spots where the corrosion was Oop. when you do the steel wool. But clearly you can see this is going to take a while. I don't know that there is a quicker way Alternatively to uh, steel wool, you could use a uh, green scotch bright. Or you could relace them. Uh, if it wasn't a budget project, I, I think I would go there. This will go a long way. Won't be perfect. Then just pick like this one and this one and this one. They're all the same each way around. So just stick to all those for a bit so that you don't lose track of what you've done and what you haven't. And for now I'm just doing the tops. And then once I've done the tops of all of those, I'll go around again, coming up underneath. And that pretty much gets all of the sides of, you know, the whole 360 degrees of the radius of the spoke. And it's time to put a little mechanical energy into things. Just a simple wire wheel here. and crannies. So on the hub, I'm just using some mag and aluminum polish. This is Mother's brand. You could use whatever. I think Turtle Wax makes a nice one too. Um, and let's just be clear that if I was going to make a show bike out of this, you really do need to disassemble the wheels entirely and take this hub out and put it on a buffing wheel, you know, on the bench top and do the same kind of job to it like I did with the aluminum side covers on the engine back in, I don't know what episode that was, 12, 13, 10, somewhere around there. Um, but 
you know, again, a budget. I just want this thing to look, you know, as good as it can. I'm not going to go show the bike somewhere. So, um, using this and just doing the best I can around here. But if I really want to get rid of this corrosion, I have to sand the aluminum first, then polish it. It's better. It's not ideal. So, I don't know what advice I have here, guys. Take this to whatever nth degree you wish for your project. Um, my Dremel is getting tired. The brushes are bad in this thing, and used it a lot on this project so far. It's not Dremel brand, it's some knockoff. Chinese made, I'm sure. But, um, it's gotten me this far. Which is quite a ways, considering what I paid for it, which is next to nothing. It's better. So that's it. This is about as far as I'm going to go. I've got an hour and a half into cleaning both of these with steel wool on the spokes. You know, still got a little bit of corrosion down there. I think actually I'm going to get some, uh, oh, sorry. I'm going to get some quadruple zero steel wool for that. I don't have any right now, but uh, that'll help with that small little bit of corrosion. So there you have it, guys. Um, the quick and, you know, not perfect way to clean spoked wheels. If you want to get it showroom beautiful, um, I, I think what I know from this exercise is that you have to disassemble those wheels. Um, that's the only way you're really going to get those hubs clean. And if you went through that much work, I would just order new spokes and get shiny chrome spokes if you want. Um, that's my advice on that. I'm going to take the budget route and let the gas tank and the rest of the bike be Oh, the shiny focal point and uh, you know when this thing's done if you want to get down close and inspect my hubs uh, probably won't be showroom ready there so is what it is I hope this was helpful a little bit on cleaning spoked wheels and uh, we'll see you next week thanks for watching